going to share with you the approach to memorization by Razina Levin, who was uh, a very, very famous piano teacher. And she was also a concert pianist. And she was the wife of Joseph Levin, a very famous um, pianist. They lived together in Moscow, but then um, after the First World War, they immigrated to New York, the United States, where both of them taught in Juilliard School. And in fact, uh, Razina Levin was a teacher of Van Kleiber, who later on uh, won the Tchaikovsky competition. Razina Levin used to say that we have four types of memory. And these four types of memory um, are oral memory, feel, right, tactile, visual, and analytical. So we need to ask ourselves this question when we try to memorize a piece of music. Do I know how it sounds like, right? That's oral memory. Do I really know how it feels like, right? So you really have to have that memory in your body and in your hands. Do I really know how it looks like, right? Can I envision my score, right, just in my head and just really um, envision all the details, harmonic changes and so forth? And do I know it from the analytical standpoint, right? Analytically, right? Can I come up with some mental uh, connections, right? Do I understand harmonic progression? Do I understand where my melody goes and so forth? So all those types of memories are very important. Um, in today's lecture, we're gonna talk about what would be important things to do before we start memorizing the piece. So first very important step in order to start memorizing is to really hear your piece uh, played by somebody else. So you can ask, for example, your teacher to play it for you. You can ask your friend to play it for you. Of course, you can always uh, try to find it, um, a recording of it done by professional pianists. So um, hearing that and hearing that enough times will be very important because it will give you um, a valuable mental picture of the entire piece. So the next step is just try to think about the piece and decide on its character. Is this piece lyrical, dramatic, tragic? Is it humorous? Is it meditative? Is it rhapsodic? Is it exciting? So really think about all possible character traits and um, just try to come up with some answers. Does this piece sound like it's a story, right? Does the title of the piece suggest any story or suggest anything at all? So really try to start thinking about this, not only in terms of uh, sounds and rhythms, but really in terms of its character. And obviously, even though you've heard the piece, we've maybe heard the multiple recordings of it, and you may be thinking about the character, but none of that is enough to, in order to start memorizing. You really need to give yourself a grace period, right, with this piece. You need to spend some time, learn the notes, and to make sure there are no mistakes. Uh, make sure your rhythm is organized, so you really um, work on that. You can count, you can count out loud, and all of those things. And you really shouldn't have those places of huge struggles. For example, if there are some technical, um, technically hard places, you want to address them first before you start memorizing them. So we really want to make sure the first stage of preparation is complete, right? So we can play the piece, hands together. We can play the piece ideally in tempo or somewhat close. Um, and we want to make sure all technical difficulties are solved. So we basically we want to say we don't struggle with this piece anymore. We can play it pretty comfortably with the score. And for some people, this may take longer time. For some people, it's shorter. And this is another thing about um, uh, memorization, right, or this aspect of memorization. Some people learn the music really fast. Some people sight, good sight readers. And so they would actually, like Richter, for example, before starting to memorize, he would sight read entire piece all the way through. And then he would have, he just opened the piece, right, on the first page, and he would start working on it, you know, solving all technical problems and immediately started to memorize. So this fast uh, memorization process is possible only for someone who can read uh, the music very fast and with basically no effort. So for most of us, we actually need a little bit of time to really get into the piece and feel like we understand uh, most of it already. What I suggest to do first is to really work on analytical memory. And again, we keep in mind that you already can play the piece hands together more or less comfortably. 
right? So I would say that we need to start analyzing the piece. And this is the very first memory that needs to be um, exercised. Because if you can already memorize, if your fingers can memorize, but you still don't really understand, you know, what is happening. It's very possible, you know, a lot of kids actually play like this, right? They have no idea even what is the key of the music, right? But they, they can nevertheless play it. So this is not the best way to do it. This is not a reliable process of memorization. So really let's start um, understanding of what means to analyze. I often tell my students, you will memorize if you analyze, right? So we basically what means um, to analyze is it means to understand the piece right and understand what is uh, what this piece is made of some of the basic steps that we need to consider um, when we start analytical uh, process of memorization of course it starts with the key we want to make sure we understand how many sharps how many flats we have and what key is this it's a very good idea if you are working on this piece and that's your um, sort of a primer piece that you're working on to play the scales and to play arpeggios of this piece, right? So you're really aware of what this key sounds like, what it looks like, and really it feels like home to you. Second step is to understand um, what is happening with the voicing in the piece. For example, where is the main voice? Where is the main melody? Sometimes it could be a tricky question, for example, because there are some pieces that are so much based on harmonies that we cannot really detect that one single melody, just like, say, in Chopin Nocturnes. So you want to ask yourself, what is, what's going on here? Is, does my piece have a melody and the accompaniment and where this melody is? Because a lot of times, actually, the melody could be in a lower voice. So just kind of have this general understanding what is happening here. Another important step is to understand the structure of the piece. The structure of the piece in music is called the form. What is the form of your composition? Some examples. It could be A, B, A form. So it's a ternary form, right? So where we have A section and then B, right, is something that's co contrasting in the middle, and then A section again. It's a very typical form. Uh, besides ABA form, another typical form is a binary form, where you only have two sections. For example, a lot of Bach's minuets are written as a binary form, and it would look uh, something like A and B. Maybe the form of your piece is a rondo form, right? One of the most famous rondos is for, for Liszt, where we hear this melody returning, right? So this reoccurring theme is called refrain, right? And it just comes after certain episodes. It always comes back. So that's what happens in the release. And the, again, this form is called rondo. There could be pieces that have a very free form. Uh, something that, for example, there are a lot of preludes uh, written like this, preludes by Scriabin, even by Bach, by Chopin. So they sort of have this very, very um, fluid, I would say, just very flexible form. It's sort of just kind of one sentence of one paragraph of the piece. Um, there are such forms as sonata forms, for example. This one really deserves um, a little bit longer talk, but maybe not in this. Um, in this particular topic. So, but sonata form is uh, organized in a very strict way where we have three main sections, exposition, development, recapitulation. And then in each section we have themes, primary theme, um, connecting theme, secondary theme, and concluding theme. So knowing all of that and how they relate to one another, that will also help us a lot to really understand this piece from analytical standpoint. So really, Talking about the structure and, you know, of course, discussing this with your teacher, this will help you a lot. And understanding, do I have a reoccurring section, for example, in the piece? Does it come back? Or everything is sort of new, always a new episode. That's also possible. So looking at your piece from this very structural uh, perspective is very, very helpful. And finally, um, we need to start learning how to find a certain mental connections in our piece. And by mental connections, I mean understanding what are the harmonies, what are the intervals, um, what happens with my melody, how does it unfold, does, uh, is it ascending melody, is it descending melody, does it have a big leap, so jumps, or it's more of a stepwise process, right? Finding those kind of 
ways. For example, how would you describe your piece if you have to only talk about it, right? You can only describe it with the words you would say. Well, it starts on this note and then goes into here. It goes into high register or low register. My left hand is accompaniment or something like this. So just really, that's, that's actually a nice exercise. You just try to talk through your piece and see what kind of language you will come up with. So all of these things contributes to analytical memory and these are very, very important. Have fun memorizing. Remember, memorization is not only gives us freedom of expression when we add the piano. It's also a fantastic exercise for our brain. And I think these exercises are very, very valuable for us. Whether or not you will perform this piece publicly, it doesn't really matter. But to go through the process of memorization is extremely rewarding experience. Happy practicing. See you next time.